This is a presentation about the patient's perspective on the treatment of an autoinflammatory disease. An autoinflammatory disease is different from an autoimmune disease in the way that an autoimmune disease requires an external factor to cause a flare by the adaptive immune system, while autoinflammatory diseases flare up out of themselves by the innate immune system. This presentation was made under supervision of Gabi Erbes. Gabi is a social pedagogue and a and systemic family therapist in the University of uh, Children's and Youth Hospital in Tübingen. Hi, I'm Luke and I'm 15 years old. I was diagnosed with CAPS when I was 6. My disease causes me to be sick for a week or more every month, but a flare also happens with certain triggers, when I get too excited for example. This has also caused a lot of problems at my elementary school. A lot of events, like Christmas celebrations for example, I couldn't join in on because I was sick. Another example is birthday parties. The first birthday party of my own that I wasn't sick on was my 10th. Hi, I'm Yasmin and I'm 18 years old. Being diagnosed with CMO changed a lot for me. I was always busy. Going to school, seeing friends and train 12 hours a week for gymnastics. Suddenly I became ill. I couldn't do the things I loved the most. Training for gymnastics became harder and harder in time. But you have to imagine, doing gymnastics was the love of my life at that point. At the end, I was forced to stop doing gymnastics. So you can actually say that getting ill made me lose the love of my life. Hi, my name is Luca. I am 15 years old. And I've been dealing with FMF for almost 14 years now, which means I never quite had a normal life. Um, the worst thing my illness has taken away from me, though, is football. I've always loved football growing up, but my illness has made it difficult for me to play football myself. And when I had the physical capacity to play for my local team, I was forced to stop playing after about a year. And I hope I'll be able to continuously play football one day. What can doctors and researchers learn from the patient perspective? I'm not a number, but a real person. I'm not my disease, but a person. I don't have a sign up on my head with CMO, but I'm just mine, my name. I have a story and I'm more than only your job. My story doesn't stop when I walk out the hospital doors. If I like it or not, the hospital is actually part of my life. Because of our rare disease, the solution will not immediately appear in front of us. I can be very sick and have a lot of pain and still have normal blood results. Those are the moments that you must trust us with the things we say. We know our body better than anyone else. So yes, maybe the results are normal, but at the moment we feel terrible and something must be done about it. In recent years, I've gotten more and more pain in my joints. The doctors look at it, but they were only focused on my diagnosis. If the serum wasn't active in a painful spot, they told me that everything was fine or that I have chronic pain syndrome and that I should go to a different doctor. I've tried the chronic pain syndrome treatment, but every time it was revealed as something different. One time it was something harmless, but the other time something more intense. But there was something every time. My trust in doctors became less and less. About four years ago, I suddenly got a growing pain in my knee. Physiotherapy did not help, so they let me do an MRI. No serum was present, so they told me to go to the pain with exercise, and the pain would lessen over time. The pain was, however, still there after three years, so I went to an orthopedic surgeon. And bingo, cracks in my cartilage that had been there for a long time. Unfortunately, it had been such a long time that the damage was severe. Slightly more than a year ago, my hip got its turn. I stepped out of the car and the pain just suddenly shut through. After a few months, I finally could get an MRI. No serum was found, so there was no explanation. However, again, they hadn't looked farther than the serum. They still don't know what's going on. Doctors wanted to help you, but they don't know always how, or they think too much inside the box. Everything that has to do with your disease belongs inside the box. The rest of your symptoms fall outside the box. Outside the box doesn't fix in their picture and doesn't concern their discipline. So you have to find your own way again. What do you think is important that doctors should know? I feel like it is important to say that many times patients feel like they're just another number 
and trust and empathy are two of the most important things important things many people are lacking and um, which is to the question what do we the patients think is important that doctors should know there are plenty of things we want doctors to know but as i'm not able to tell you about all of them i've focused on three main parts um firstly 99 of the times patients neither exaggerate nor lie to you about the symptoms they're experiencing. Um, there's no point in lying for us. Um, it won't give us an advantage in any way. It won't uh, give us a benefit in any way. It will be quite the opposite, actually. We will have to take more medications. We will need to have more frequent doctor's appointments, more testing, and those kind of things. Um, many people actually downplay the situation and just say it's not that bad because they don't want people to think that we are exaggerating or lying. Another major topic, uh, especially for younger patients, is that um, doctors don't believe what they're saying and just think they're someone's pop when they're not. Um, the pain they're describing to you is very much real. Another major issue, especially for younger patients, is um, telling doctors that they're not someone's puppet um, and just repeat what their parents tell them to say. Um, these patients are the specialists in the room because in most cases, doctors aren't patients themselves. And I've already had several encounters uh, with doctors who didn't believe me, who thought I was lying, who thought I was exaggerating. And I really, really affects the patient-doctor relationship. The last thing I'd like to talk about is um, that tests uh, like blood work um, are not the greatest indicator to measure illness activity. And this can be seen with fatigue. Fatigue is a very, very major issue for many patients. And I have the feeling that many doctors don't value the effect um, a fatigue can have on us appropriately um, because there is no way of actually backing it up with blood work and these kind of things. And I often had fatigue as my primary issue, um, yet it wasn't viewed as being as bad as having um, joint pain or fever, uh, which often caused me to feel like I was exaggerating my own situation. I was just making this up in my mind. It wasn't as bad as, was, uh, as I was thinking. And the worst about um, fatigue is that you can't actually fight it with any painkillers, um, like joint pain, a fever, and so on. Doctors should always keep in mind that the patients aren't real people, not just set a test subjects that need results. I, for example, have never fully understood my disease until I had biology classes because my doctor never really understood how important that was. Or take blood work results, for example. I still have no idea which values are good and which ones are not, nor what they mean. Taking the time to explain these things can help a lot in the understanding of why the patient feels the way they do. The very same goes for symptoms. Take the time to understand what the patient is saying and discuss what can be done. Even if you don't know, it shows a lot if you're honest about it. Doctors have to understand that we also grow up partly in the hospital. With me until I was 15, my disease was not explained because my doctor didn't understand the importance of it. While we grow up there just as much as we do at home, for some people literally and for some people figuratively. Doctors have to understand that growing up with this disease also means growing up with a specialist and that explaining the disease is also very important. This explanation would need to be understandable for the patient, so it would need to be age-appropriate in layman's terms. Only then can the patient explain it to others. Ask what the patient needs. What do you want? How can I help you? What is your goal to reach right now? What do you think is the best for you? Those are the questions I would ask my patient. Trust in what the patient says is a fundamental part of a patient-doctor relationship. And many, many patients will easily lose trust in doctors, treatments, and even themselves, as doctors are supposed to be the ones validating what we are saying. And as mentioned before, there is no reason to lie. And blood work is and should not be the number one indicator for illness activity. And if there, 
even I lost trust in my own judgment at times due to my doctors being skeptical and giving me the feeling of not understanding or trusting. You know the theory, we know the practice. In the meetings to discuss this presentation, one thing that we all found extremely important to present was the fact that we know the practice of the disease, and that's something that shouldn't be taken for granted. Like Luca said, don't expect this to be exaggerating or lying. Try asking more questions to find out more. We prefer, I don't know, to an empty statement. We didn't ask for rare disease. We are, however, asking for more research. Thank you so much, Luca, Yasmin, and Gabi for your help on this presentation. Um, if any of you have any questions after the Q&A, then uh, feel free to email us at uh, these email addresses. And um, a, special, a very special thank you to the Flying Lifeguards for providing uh, all of the images throughout this presentation. Feel free to ask us any questions you like about the presentation. If you don't have any questions, we have some points here to sum up the presentation, which you can ask us questions about.